Hello Textile Buddies! I'm Daria, a textile and surface pattern designer and artist, both traditional and digital. On this channel I'm talking all things artwork, textile, color, pattern and more. Patterns are everywhere. Today I would like to talk in detail about the beginning stage of creating a textile design, making motifs. Motifs are the elements that eventually will make your repeat tile. Please subscribe to my channel so we can stay the textile bodies that we are and don't forget to hit that notification bell icon so you do not miss new videos that I post. So motifs is a textile design term, it's not motive, it's motif, it ends with an F and basically they are separate elements that will later on make your fabric or surface pattern design. So this is the finished product, this is the fabric. There are two main ways of making motifs and that would be the traditional mediums and the digital. And two main options to finish up the motifs into a repeat unit would be in Photoshop and that would be raster artwork or Illustrator and that would be vector artwork. You can also put raster artwork into Adobe Illustrator but more on that later. Simply put, textile design can be made from any motifs, drawing, paintings, footprints, child's doodles, scanned leaves and so on and so forth. But we just need to consider how appropriate and trendy it is. You can scan anything and put anything on a scanner and make it into a repeating pattern, but what for, right? So let's look at the traditional ways first. Number one is painting and watercolor ink and gouache are the most common. Oil and acrylic could be used as well, but you know, it's tricky to scan, they are very shiny when you scan them and the look is just not trendy. You know, it can be used in certain places sometimes, but I would say it's not the go-to right now. Let's leave it to fine art and just stick with watercolor ink and gouache. Watercolor and gouache are very similar in handling, but the difference is in opacity. Watercolor is usually very watery and transparent and gouache is opaque. So this bird example that I showed you is gouache. I also used a colored pencil on top. And now I'll show you some watercolor motifs so you can compare as well. So these tigers are watercolor and I used a thin brush here to do the line work. There is no you know, liner, marker or anything like that. And as you can see, you can paint motifs in different ways. You can do like this, sort of on a sheet, because they will eventually go on a scanner and you will, you know, move your elements around. These guys I chose to paint on separate sheets because I was trying to be business smart and I thought that maybe eventually I will sell them as, you know, separate illustrations. We'll see, the day has yet to come. <laughs> You can also paint motifs, you know, like this and then scan them. I also added flowers to make the final product. You can do it like this in an arrangement because I pretty much used this layout here. You don't have to plan this right away. You could definitely move stuff around in the, on the computer. But see, like I basically used the way I paint. Am I showing it upside down? <laughs> I basically used it the way I painted it. And then you, you know, you here's this bird, see? And then you can flip them and rotate and mirror, like this bird is right here as well. And you do that a lot in textile design. So you paint your motifs and then, you know, you make them bigger, smaller, you mirror them and so on and so forth. Number two would be drawing. So you can draw with pencil, marker, pen, dip pen and other things. Uh, you can also, of course, draw with pastels, for example, but here would be a good place to think about trends. For example, uh, colored pencils are not very trendy in textile design, but you can do things like this. These are some more examples. This was drawn, I think, with a gel ink pen. Sometimes I use a traditional uh, dip pen with ink, and sometimes I'm just a little lazy <laughs> and I just you know, use a gel ink pen. Number three is stamping and textures. It could work. It uh, kind of also resembles block printing. You could, you know, cut out uh, block prints and block print the fabric. So the fabric is stamped directly. And, or you can stamp paper and then digitize those motifs. And I will include some examples somewhere here. <laughs> 
Number four is scanned objects. So you can use, for example, dried leaves, buttons, other things that you find in your backyard. I think you have to be careful here because it can look a little bit dated. You know, it's not a particularly trending look right now. I think collage and all that stuff uh, was very hot in the 90s when, you know, the computers were coming in strong and people were like, oh my God, I can scan it and I can put it on fabric and so on and so forth. I've used some vintage ephemera for my not so junk journal collection. So I thought that would be cute. People didn't really appreciate it. I'm gonna be honest with you. So these fabrics are not selling as well as I was expecting them to, but I still like them. You know, I carried out my idea. I showed what I wanted to show. So yeah, another example would be a uh, spoon flower. Always has a family recipe tea towel challenge. So you can scan, they have, I think, a blog post on doing this as a project. Look, you can scan like a sheet from a cookbook that your grandmother maybe wrote and you can turn it into, you know, a textile design. Number five is photography. Uh, first and foremost, always use your own photography if you go this route. I'm personally not a fan of photographic textile designs, but actually photorealistic things sometimes you know they come and go like I have this textile design book and there is an entire tutorial about these photorealistic roses as you see I mean it's a matter of taste I'm not a fan you know when I worked as an in-house stationery designer we did a range of wrapping paper and gift bags with photorealistic candy and kittens and puppies I mean it's a matter of taste I think it's a bit tacky but it's definitely a certain look it's an aesthetic of, of its own it's kitsch basically i think not always and again it's not a bad thing it's just a matter of taste it's kind of like the ugly sweater trend in the united states when i first saw it i was shocked <laughs> it's a thing right it's a vibe as the young people say nowadays or using photorealistic gold glitter was once a thing and i think many designers still do it Again, it's not my thing, it doesn't fit with my taste, my aesthetic, my brand, but it can fit, you know, with other people's brands. Now let's talk about digital art. So those were the traditional mediums and you can also do textile design without ever touching pen and paper. So digital art can be divided into raster and vector. Raster is created in Procreate on iPad and Photoshop on computer or laptop and vector is adobe illustrator and i think there is also a software called affinity i have not touched it i have not seen it i have not used it but i've heard designers say great things about it but photoshop and illustrator are the major players on the market so let's start with photoshop photoshop has been around for a while uh, you can paint and draw directly in there it mimics real life materials you know paint brushes paint and drawing procreate is another raster software it's fairly new procreate is very popular right now it's super trending it's very powerful it has lots of brushes that you can even customize and you can buy brushes on different marketplaces such as creative market you can create your own brushes if you're handy you know many procreate artists still end up in photoshop some people know how to do everything from scratch from procreate and end up with making a repeat tile in procreate i think that's like an extra step i would say if you want to do procreate maybe start with you know drawing motifs in procreate and maybe then take them to photoshop i think that's easier in my opinion but maybe if you're not familiar with photoshop it might be worth it to learn how to do everything directly in Procreate. There are classes on Skillshare about that. So I have also created some, you know, Procreate designs because I was curious. I, I was feeling pressured to do it. In the end, I didn't end up liking it as much. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. But it's just, you know, I'm so traditionally trained and I love watercolor and paper. So I did not appreciate this like glass surface, you know, and the sensation of drawing with a pencil on a glass. So here are some very simple cat motifs. So see, I drew them directly in here and then I turned it into a design called Homebody Heaven. 
I will include it somewhere here. So if you are considering working in Procreate, the first thing you need to consider is are you comfortable working on a small screen like this? Because even this is a big iPad, but still like, it's fairly small for me. I'm used to painting quite large, medium to large, and every artist has their preference. Some people prefer to work really small, you know, sometimes you look at their Instagram, beautiful art, but then you realize it's like this big, you know, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. I prefer doing medium to large. I have a big Mac, so I'm more comfortable with like space and big, you know, she's, I know all these pieces are small here, right? There was, that's a different story, okay? But now I've been painting larger and larger, like 12 by 16 is my favorite size. When I create motifs for textile design, I'll often do, you know, a regular sheet like this. If you're sketching a lot, some artists prefer a small sketchbook. My sketchbook is big. Let me grab it. So this is my sketchbook. It's pretty big, see? Like I usually don't draw motifs directly in here. I will like practice brushes and stuff, but you can, like this can become a textile design one day. And I also have some motif sheets like this. So I like this size. But again, you don't have to repeat after me. Do whatever is comfortable for you. And going back to, you know, working on iPad, are you comfortable with working with this size? The advantage of raster artwork is that it has this very particular handmade look. You know, if it's watercolor, it looks like watercolor. Vector gets tricky with texture. Like if you're going for this painted look, stay with watercolor, paint it, or at least, you know, you can use brushes and procreate that look like painting, and then you take them to Photoshop. Some people take raster artwork to vector and vectorize it so turn it into it's called image trace and turn them into vector points i would advise against doing this because it makes your file huge it's impossible to recall it's just not necessary you can take you know raster objects into illustrator and embed them and manipulate them in the pattern making tool or make layouts you can definitely do that but i would say do not vectorize watercolor. That's my personal experience, my personal opinion. So now let's talk about vector. Vector is a world of its own. The biggest advantage is that it's easy to scale without losing the quality, unlike raster. If you draw something this small and you try to make it this big in Photoshop, it will look pixelated, you know, with the little squares, it will lose the quality, but it will not happen with vector. Vector, you know, you can, do a small piece of art directly in Illustrator or vectorize it. If it's like a simple shape, clean shape, a couple colors, then you're good to go in Illustrator. If you have done it the right way, it's also very easy to recolor vector art because the color palette is usually limited and it's very easy to switch colors. And coloring is a very important topic in textile design. So it's always good to know how you're going to recolor your art because we make colorways or at least we switch the background color that's the minimum so it's good to think about it but maybe if you are just starting out don't bother for right now so also vector artwork sells better on micro stocks such as shutterstock and adobe stock and others so if you are considering you know being a micro stock designer some people make it as their career maybe it's good to learn vector artwork but again there are watercolor artists as well on shutterstock if it's the path you want to go you can explore it totally now maybe you are wondering what is better what is the way to go nothing is better or worse all styles are important trends come and go sometimes you are looking for a specific look there is a need for all these diff different styles different products, curtains, phone cases, cosmetic bags, nurses scrubs, bus seats, they are all different textile designs, right? Some are more conservative, some are fun, crazy and quirky. Also there are different demographics, right? I've seen recently there's been a rise uh, for men's underwear and socks with really silly prints. There is a company called Print Fresh. They do really fun pajamas, really, really cool prints, check them out. Home decor is probably the most conservative market, 
but again i try to bring my twist into this uh, market i personally like a combination of quirky and sophisticated you know it's whimsical but it's still sophisticated so my advice to you would be choose one thing and get really good at it i mean of course you can test and try you know vector and watercolor and doodle art and i don't know icons and what is that called logos but in the end you still have to narrow down to a couple things you can't be doing everything again it's a big topic i am guilty as charged because i have tried it all i have done so many different kinds of textile design but in the end i landed mostly on watercolor i do vector as well sometimes especially especially for kids artwork i use vector a lot or sometimes i'll do like a really ditzy floral in vector so i do create vector artwork sometimes and another thing I want to warn you is it's good to think about trends and what is selling as well. It's important. You can't just make art that only you like. You eventually want people to purchase your textile designs. But on the other hand, it's important if you really like painting, keep painting. Don't do vector art just because people say it sells better. There are always artists who say, you know, my vectors are not selling, my watercolors are selling more. And again, these are all technicalities. Like uh, customers don't know if this is vector or watercolor probably. They just like the pattern, they like the look. If you are a strong, I don't know, Procreate artist, don't force yourself to paint. I've seen it actually. There is one artist who I follow who is hugely successful. And you know, we keep in touch. We like each other's work. She is a 100% Procreate artist. And one day she posted like, oh, I think I really should paint more. And she painted in watercolor. And it was so bad to be honest with you. I mean, it's great to experiment. It's like my Procreate art. It's not as strong as my watercolor art. So again, of course you can do whatever you want and whatever you like and maybe you are comfortable just, you know, being in this business uh, mind attitude like I just want to create whatever is trending, that's okay. But don't feel forced to follow the crowd if it's not what you like. So another important question about motifs is how many motifs should you create? I would say a good number is about five. It doesn't have to be five, it can be four. I would say it's better to do an odd number actually. Like, look, there are five birds and there are some, uh, there are three houses and three nests. I didn't even like directly count it. So when you're painting, you should think about the angles. So I have like a front facing bird and some nice angles. And also don't use like super, super weird, like bird view angles where you see like, like this, you know, <laughs> the bird. So textile design is kind of conservative. I know in drawing and painting, it's really skillful to be able to paint like a complex angle like this of your hand, but it's not necessary for textile design. Stick with like front and profile and maybe like three quarter views. Sometimes there are very simple patterns that are only one icon, or like half drops, you know, half drop designs. So one icon might be enough. Sometimes you rotate it, you mirror it and that's good to go. You can paint them as separates, you know, as I was showing you, paint or draw or whatever you choose to do, you can do this. Or you can paint them in like clumps or you can paint the entire layout right away. Sometimes people even do scenes, you know, like a scenery or cityscape or something like that. It's up to you. You can also have like, these are not overlapping here, but you can have, you know, like flowers overlapping over each other. Also look at these guys, like they're pretty much separate. I've used all this, like all the uh, words and the splatter, I've used it on my textile designs. Here are some more motifs. I actually don't even know what is in this pile. <laughs> Maybe there will be some surprise. Yeah, it's mostly flowers like this. So when I'm not concerned with like where this goes next, I'll just paint on a sheet. I'll think about how I scan it. I want to maximize my scanning surface, so I'll yeah, use uh, big sheets. But sometimes I start to think, I'm like, I have so many of these sheets. Sometimes if you know the paper is not very good and if I'm 
not particularly thrilled about these flowers i'll paint on reverse just to be practical but you can sell you know your originals if you are interested and that's why i started doing this thing see this is also for you know a design of mine and then you know i rearrange it in photoshop these are also motifs i will for sure be making a video about watercolor motifs let me know if you're interested in any other topics i could talk about vector i could talk about procreate even though i'm not a pro in procreate not a procreate pro so yes uh, if you have enjoyed this video i would really appreciate your like it's an absolutely free equivalent of saying thank you to me don't forget to subscribe to my channel follow me on instagram check out my spoonflower shop check out patterntalent.com i have been adding new products i recently added kitchen towels with textile designs and that's it remember textiles are everywhere mm -hmm.